Monster Hunter is a video game that has been around since 2004. It first sparked its popularity in Japan and has spread its name across the Western audience. I love this game so much. I've played a lot of games growing up, but none has struck me over like Monster Hunter. It had a lot of interesting mechanics that piqued my interest throughout my journey as I played each and every Monster Hunter game. For the longest time, the Monster Hunter team have been trying many many times in creating an immersive hunting experience like no other action game. However, not all of their ideas get pushed through back then. Some were ahead of its time, and some were discontinued. I speculate that they're going to try once again some of the game mechanics and ideas that they have attempted or had before that could potentially return in Monster Hunter Wilds. First we see that we're on a desert and it is packed with armadillo-like small monsters. This reminded me of the time back then when I was still playing Monster Hunter Dose. Inside the jungle, during a specific season, there would be a lot of velocipreys in the area, which makes it really challenging in hunting the large monsters if you didn't clear up the area. In future Monster Hunter games, they've reduced the monster density, probably due to technical limitation, and they began to focus more on the large monster interactions. In some way, these sort of caused some of the small monsters to play somewhat little to no role anymore during the hunt, which is unfortunate because I think they're equally as important as large monsters. Sometimes they even change the tide of your hunt, like how Vespoids, Bullfangos, and Delex disrupt your hunt. But now in Monster Hunter Wilds, they've increased the small monster's density in the area once again. Not only it makes the area feel more alive, but this also poses some interesting questions. While you're on the hunt, what will the interaction be like with these small monsters? Better yet, how are you going to take advantage of the density of these small monsters? Because in the teaser video, if you've noticed, while the hunter is hastily escaping from the group of Harag like monsters, the hunter went through the group of small monsters to block and distract away those ones that are chasing him. Oh yeah, just a side note, while I was writing this script, besides the monster density in the area, he could double down on the interaction we get with these small monsters. I remember back in Monster Hunter World, if there's a Diablos in the area nearby the sand pit, if you hit the small flying monster, it could cause the Diablos to pop out of the sand, causing a pitfall trap to any large monster standing above it, or something like Gajalakas paralyzing or putting the large monster to sleep. I'd love to see more of these interactions, and I think we're bound to see more of these in Monster Hunter Wilds. We've already talked about the small monsters, now it's time to talk about the environment and weather. In the teaser, we saw a shot of the sky filled with clouds blocking the warm sunlight. As the hunter was running away from the monsters, from the distance, we suddenly see a huge dust storm or sandstorm coming right in and it devoured everyone inside. It disrupted the field of vision of the hunter due to the thick sand and a lot of lightning bolts striking down the ground. As the hunter made its way on the top, we witnessed the unveiling of the golden land that was covered by the storm. Seeing this scene from the teaser for the first time, it gave me a lot of goosebumps. Alongside with the powerful sound of the horns and strings, that reveal was incredible. If you went onto their official website of Monster Hunter, they played the animation once again, showcasing the dynamic change of the weather from dark sandstorms to having clear skies. It seems like the weather or environment would play a huge role in Monster Hunter Wild. The changing of environments and weather was an attempt back in Monster Hunter Dose. The weather in Monster Hunter Dose played a bit of a small role in your hunts, such as obstructing pathways you typically go in the locale and some items that you use. For example, in the swamp area in Monster Hunter Dose, on a rainy weather in the swamp area, some of the areas are safe to explore. If it wasn't raining in the swamp, some of the places would have large pools of poison. 
and some of which are obstructing your pathway. Similarly with a volcanic locale, when the volcano becomes violent, lava paths begin to overflow which disrupts the pathway you tend to go. Usually these pathways are typically crossed by large monsters during your hunt. It's interesting to think that they've thought of this mechanic way back in the second generation. Of course, it doesn't happen during your hunt, but from what it looks like on the teaser, they're aiming it to be more dynamic now in Monster Hunter Wilds. This may seem overly stretched, but hey, we're already speculating on a one minute teaser. As the hunter was running away from the lightning storm, consciously or subconsciously, it took advantage of its environment so the hunter and the mount wouldn't get struck by lightning. If you look closely, the hunter took advantage of the small monster that's nearby that has this large spike on its back and that thing served as a lightning rod to prevent itself getting struck by lightning. Same goes with the large pole-like things sticking out in the environment. If that was the intent here, it adds this new layer or way of how you would engage in your hunt. Of course, they've made this attempt of taking advantage of your environment back in Monster Hunter World. On top of the ancient forest, there's this wyvern nest, and you can cause a waterfall by blowing up the large branches or baiting the large monster to attack it, and it causes them to fall off the tree. Similarly, in the Hoarfrost Reach, inside the cave, you can collapse these large crystals hanging on the top of the cave using a slinger shot. Also collapse the ice terrain by blowing it up with a bomb. This also goes way back in Monster Hunter Dose. You can take advantage of your environment too. While I was hunting Basarios in the volcanic locale, there would be large explosive rocks in the area. I would bait Basarios to run in those rocks, causing it to explode. Sometimes I would even place barrel bombs near it so it could cause even more explosive damage. There's a lot more to share, but overanalyzing this sort of short part of the teaser made me think that they're bound to create more of these environmental things that you can take advantage of during your hunt. Another thing I would like to mention is how Elder Dragons could play a role of disrupting the weather in the area. We can visually see the changes in Monsanto world when the Elder Dragon enters or lurks the locale. The ones I remember is when there was a Kirin in the Hoarfrost Reach, the sky would be filled with thunderstorms. These visual changes in the environment can also be seen in older Monster Hunter games. When you hunt Koshala in the jungle, the heavy rain obscures your vision. Similarly, if you hunt it down in the snowy mountains, besides the heavy blizzard obscuring your vision, you wouldn't be able to place down bombs on the area where there is a blizzard. Since Monster Hunter Wilds seems to be exploring more aspects on how to make the environment more engaging, there is a possibility that Elder Dragons would not only make any visual changes on the environment or the weather, but they would play a bit of a role on disrupting the environment around you. If, let's say for an example, if there was a Vilcana in the area, there would be a blizzard. Certain items can't be used or the items you typically gather in the area are gone It's since it's all frozen up or certain pathways could be blocked due to large ice crystal walls created by the Elder Dragon. Or Valhazak in the area would cause some of the gathering spots to decay and some monsters wither away. Of course, these monsters aren't announced yet, but you get the idea on how they could disrupt the environment. Are you still with me? I've been talking about the environment and weather for a couple of minutes now. One last mechanic I'd like to share that the Monster Hunter team has attempted before, but it didn't get that much attention. And that was the changing of seasons. I won't go deep into it in this video. You can check out this video I made a while back, but Basically, the changing of seasons was an insane mechanic that they had back then in Monster Hunter Dose. Just to give a few things on how it affects your gameplay, every season cycle changes the monster density in the area. Every season cycle changes the locales that you can safely visit. Every season cycle changes the gathering spot spawns and quantity. Every season cycle every season changes the monster cycle, changes the food recipe. <sighs> You get the idea. 
There's a lot more to explain about this mechanic. They've tried it before, Monster Hunter Wilds may or may not explore these mechanics again. Going back to the scene where the hunter was being chased by a group of Gauss Harag like monsters, it reminded me of the mechanic they had back in Monster Hunter 4, wherein the hunter was being chased by a Tigrex and my god that looked terrifying. In the video, you can see the hunter running, climbing and jumping all over the terrain just to escape the T-Rex and this T-Rex is rampantly destroying everything in its path to get to the hunter. While the hunter reached on the top, it now then encounters another monster, Rathalos. So Rathalos roars and fires a fireball, the ground literally collapses, causing the Tigrex to fall off and the hunter was holding for its dear life to not fall off. The hunter took a risk and jumped over Rathalos, mounting the monster and safely dropping onto the ground. Wow. In game they toned it down, but this idea is really ahead of its time on how we can interact with these monsters. However, they've tried it again during the early stages of Monster Hunter World. The hunter was being chased by Anjanath in the ancient forest. The Anjanath was trying its best, leaping towards the large branches or roots of the tree. It also tried to destroy the path just to get to the hunter. Since they have already teased a bit on how monsters interact with the hunter in Monster Hunter Wilds, we've already seen how the hunter explores the obscure terrain, jumping upward with the mount and even gliding downward. I speculate that they're trying to do this kind of interaction once again, the monsters and the hunter chasing, moving and interacting all around on an uneven terrain. At the first part of the teaser, we saw the hunter riding on a mount. In the beginning, it was only running on two legs, but then it started sprinting using four of its legs. It moves really quick, kind of like the Palamute in Monster Hunter Rise. What's cool is it can fly and hold another weapon for you. Towards at the end of the teaser, they showed a wide view of the landscape we are in. This is going to be interesting. Based on what you have seen so far, the map in this game could possibly be huge. I speculate that the map in this game would be some huge interconnected biomes, much bigger than the ones that we have previously seen in other Monster Hunter titles. We first saw them attempt an interconnected biome back in Monster Hunter World Iceborne. The place was called Guiding Lands. And in every section of the map, we see a forest, snow, desert, volcanic and more. It was an interesting idea and they tried it again in Monster Hunter Rise Sunbreak. The interconnected biome was expanded even more and there was a lot of small and hidden spots to explore. I had a lot of fun exploring these two maps. During the interview with Jozo, in one section of the short interview he mentions, if he mentions a new level of detailed creatures and ecosystem, we can speculate that they're bound to attempt a huge maps for us to explore, and it might just be a huge interconnected biome. But of course, we'll have to wait and see. Speaking of bigger maps, does this mean we are far away from our camp? If we consider the name of the game they have chosen, Monster Hunter Wilds. It sounds like we'll always be out in the wild, out of our safe zone. Well, it's always been like that, so whatever. I had to bring this up. I'm sure other Monster Hunter creators have mentioned this. Our mount is carrying another weapon, and it's a light bow gun, like the one in Monster Hunter World. Does this mean we're carrying another weapon because we're far away from our camp? Maybe the mount is also capable of carrying extra items that we have or materials. This could be a thing since in Monster Hunter Rise, the Palamute serves as an extra pouch for any item surplus that we have. But maybe this time we can pick and choose on what to add in there as we explore far away from our camp. I do believe the Monster Hunter team is ambitious enough to revisit and explore new mechanics in the upcoming Monster Hunter game. 
I'm really excited. Like I mentioned, this is all speculation. But what we have seen so far, this is going to be interesting. This could be it. The Monster Hunter hunting game that they have aspired to be.